ovals. Oh yeah. A pair of eggs. Wow. So it's going to get worse. And that's only in the one section too. Yeah. Oh, bunny boy. I would say most likely though that, that Blackie's always had these mites. Chris has discovered the culprit behind Blackie's dandruff problem, thermites. What's the one place on Blackie's body that Blackie can't chew? Right in the middle of his back, and that's where they've put it. Yeah. You can see by that sample there yes. how many eggs there were there. Yeah. So very quickly this could go from being a small problem to being a very big problem. So what we're going to do is actually give Blackie a dog and cat treatment. Rabbit fur mites are different to those found on cats and dogs, but the same treatment can be used for both. But over the next probably 24 hours, that'll spread throughout the skin. All right. And, uh, and go all over the body and target these little mites that are here as well. Blackie's problems may be coming to an end, but it seems Chris's are only just beginning. <laughs> Allergy, is it? You allergic to rabbits? Potentially. Mm -hmm. Oh, oops, sorry. It's only some rabbits. Blackie, it's all your fault. How could you? <laughs> <Poor fella. laughs> no. <laughs> That's pretty funny. It's funny, is it? <laughs> Not funny, but like, sorry. So, it's all right, it's going to be a tough day. Mm. It's going to be all right. Thank you. So it's a success. The rabbit's going to be treated. We've identified the cause, but I think I'm now the patient. But hey, the rabbit's OK. They say I already do. <laughs> Chris is examining Mr Wilson's severe eye problems. He's got what's called entropion, where he's got so much loose skin, the eyelashes on the end of that eyelid actually roll inwards. You can see when I let it go, they jump inwards. And they sit actually on the eyeball itself. It's like having that eye. It's like having an eyelash stuck on your eye the whole time. If that keeps on happening, he will go blind. There's no two ways about it. He'll lose his vision just from that constant irritation. So this needs to be done. It needs to be done early. And they've done exactly the right thing in getting him looked at. What I propose that we do is lift up this eyelid, lift up the bottom eyelid, maybe even take a little slice out of the corner, yeah. which will actually give his, make his eye a bit bigger mm -hmm. and allow that eyeball of his to, to actually see the world. Uh -huh. Giving you a good look, that's mum. It's the first time you've ever seen her. <laughs> and while we're in there, you don't want any, any other changes to him? Maybe just no. take the rest of the skin no, away? No, that's what people like about him. You right? sure? We've got a, <laughs> see, we've got a whole board of dogs over here. Any room for me? I can, no, do, I, I can do... No, thank you. This is... I could do any of these. What about a pom? We can make him into a pomeranian. Yeah, Just yeah. take a bit yeah. of extra skin on. Yeah. I'm quite happy for my baby, isn't it? <laughs> There's no obvious signs of trauma. No signs of fractures in those wings. Chris's first patient of the day is a seriously malnourished Boobook owl. He hasn't eaten for quite a while and he's been very weak and, and very distressed. So any nutrition you can get into him is going to be very welcome. And as you can see, he's taking up beautifully. Too weak to catch his own food, this little guy is close to starvation. Give him some fluids underneath his skin. His skin's so incredibly fragile too. He's got to find a spot. Perfectly designed, isn't he? I hope that's a look of thanks. While Chris has done everything he can for the owl, his patient has passed on more than just thanks. The owl is infested with parasites and he's sharing them around. Oh, I just hate, yeah, they're, on, they're everywhere. They're just so annoying. Just looks as though he's in a bit of shock as well. At the Bondi Clinic, a heartbreaking emergency has just arrived. This tiny joey was found on the side of a road with no mother in sight. The leg muscle here. That's just going to try and give his system a bit of a kickstart. Uh, it's a cortisone based drug, so it, I guess, improves the circulation, just gets everything revved up because right now his system's just crashing. Yeah, that's nice and warm. Okay, Mummy's milk. If we go too fast, then that milk drips down the back of his throat and he's too weak really to, to close off his larynx, then that milk goes straight into his lungs. And if that happens, then it's going to be fatal. You just can't be impatient with them. Leah from Sydney Wildlife rushed the baby Eastern Grey kangaroo into the clinic. He hasn't been fed properly for three days and normally in the pouch he'd be continuously getting nutrients, having warmth from his mother, so I don't, I don't think it's very good. The family who first found the abandoned Joey 
fed him cow's milk for three days. They thought they were doing the right thing. Cow's milk is really not suited to them at all. It's got lactose. Now, lactose is a sugar that kangaroos just can't digest. Another 12 hours, no chance. But it's just possible we've got him in time. It's going to be really tough, though. I know he was just acting weird. And then I rang up my brother and said, do you know what's wrong with him? And he said, last time that, that happened, it was a tick. 17-year-old Lucas has arrived at the Bondi Referral Hospital, Sash, with the family Samoyed. The 11-month-old, called Polar, has suddenly lost control of his back legs and can no longer stand. How long ago could he not walk? When oh. did you notice? Probably about three or four hours ago was when I first noticed okay. it. If a paralysis tick has burrowed into Polar, emergency vet Lisa Chimes needs to find the killer parasite fast. Basically what happens when they're bitten by a tick is that it causes paralysis so the toxin goes into the bloodstream and it, and it binds at the ends um, where the muscles meet the nerves um, and it paralyses them so it usually starts at the back legs and it moves up. It's alright sweetie, I know, I know. It's life threatening because it can paralyse the breathing muscles so they won't be able to breathe anymore. Can you just give them a cuddle in the head? It's okay, it's alright sweetie. The bewildered polar has to be transferred to the treatment room. He's got so much hair and you need to search in all the little orifices around his bum and his ears, around the mouth, so he's going to need a full haircut to try and find the tick. It's too early to tell exactly how he's going to do. We really are not able to stop the bleeding right now, but we can give her a blood transfusion to support her in the meantime. Let me just lie down. I'm going to make you feel better, OK? She's a great little dog, friendly little thing. Hasn't got a bad bone in the body. It's a sad thing, you know, part of your family. Fight this. Motley's life now depends on finding a fellow canine that can donate the life-giving blood she desperately needs. I think your mates actually got rid of you because you're actually annoying. <laughs> they said, leave home and run away. We're sick of you. I'm just looking for any fractures in the shell, um, any injuries to the soft part of him. He looks fine though, he looks in great nick. He's not dehydrated at all. You can see his eyes very, very liquid. There's no sign of, of it being sunken up or anything like that. A lot of people think they just have to live in water and, and as a result if they find one they you know whack it in a bucket, bucket of water but it can actually be a bad thing for them because being dry is actually is quite good for them. But they love to migrate. They'll walk huge distances to find new patches of water, new territory and, and that's where they get into trouble because they, they have to cross roads and that's when they get hit by cars. Yeah he's ready to go. You've got the right direction too. It is that way. You're good. A five-month-old Burmese kitten has just been admitted with a mystery illness. Well, Felix was absolutely fine until yesterday, and this morning he didn't eat his breakfast, and he was really down, and he's usually a lively little kitten, and his skin was all dry, and then he started retching and vomiting and diarrhoea and just being really floppy. He's reacting when I'm touching his kidneys. Felix is in a lot of pain. Cats are normally really stoic animals and he's yelping out when I'm feeling his abdomen, so he's in a lot of pain over there. Have you eaten something not nice? It's possible that he could have swallowed something. He's a young cat and kittens play with things, so... Indoor outdoor. Yeah, they ingest lots of different things and it's very possible. I can't feel anything obvious there, so he's a very sick little kitten. Yeah. Felix is your friend, isn't he? A bit sad as well. Let's just hope it's something that we can fix. What do you got here? Yeah, there's a ducking, some duckings in there. Hey, Mum. Chris has received an urgent call from Barry, a member of the wildlife rescue group Wires. Probably not the place to raise kids on a building site, is it? No. We've been called out to a house that's under construction because the neighbours have seen there's a family of ducklings trying to eke out a living in the family swimming pool. Only problem is there were four yesterday, there's now three. I'll just approach slowly here. The house isn't a place for these ducklings to be raised. There's obviously predators around. We need to get the ducklings, catch them all, try to get the mother as well, and then relocate them to a safer place. We want to keep the family unit together, 
So we need to approach this very carefully with a very distinct plan. Could be getting dirty here, Barry. I think I've got you. A little submarine duck. Want to see the family? Feeling really relieved. That could have gone really pear-shaped very quickly if Mum had decided to take off down the central runway here, out. That could have been the end of the family, but we managed to get her, get her quickly, and with a bit of extra hassle, grab the babies as well. <laughs> Seem to have upset the local order. After the stagnant water in the pool at their last address, this is paradise. I'm guessing because you're the feisty one, you're the submarine duck. They're going to be relying on you. Look out for your brothers and sisters, all right? Okay. Go out there now and enjoy yourself, okay? Stay safe. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.